So as we said earlier, the row number function is going to put the row number within the book because we have grouped by book. And this part is going to do the chapter number within the book again because we have grouped by book. Okay. So now let's first verify that things have happened as we planned for them to happen. Right. In our earlier case, when we had a very small file, right, so when we had this small file, right, we were able to see what happened. Now that we have this large file, we cannot just scroll down and take a look at what's going on. That's going to be a lot of work. So in order to check that the line numbers and chapter numbers are indeed reset at the start of a new book. Let's see, uh, let's filter original books. This is the data frame that we created right here, right, which is essentially all the Jane Austen books with uh, all the lines, but for every line, we've got a line number, a chapter number, and a chapter number, right? So let's filter and look at only the rows for the book Sense and Sensibility. Okay, so now you see line number starts at 1, chapter number starts at 0, chapter number goes to 1 here, all looks good, right? But how do we know after, let's say, 1000 lines of sense and sensibility, how do we know that the line number has been correctly reset for the next book? Okay, so let's select another book by Jane Austen. This time when we're looking at the book M, right? So again, you see here line number is indeed starting at 1 chapter number. Uh, in fact, they have a volume number instead of chapter number, right? But of course, we are not using volume numbers here. We are going to look only for chapter and we are going to use chapter numbers. So therefore, the chapter number still remains zero until we actually hit the chapter. Okay, so that is how it worked. Uh, so you've got this. Now, the next thing we want to do, of course, is to break it into words, right? Remember, I've always been saying right from the beginning, that our unit of analysis is going to be words. Okay. Now it's a simple matter. We've got the line number, we've got the chapter number. All we have to do now is to use unnest tokens and we'll have the words. Very simple, right? So going from here to here is going to be really simple. And we know how to do that already. Right? So you've got original books, which is what we created right here. Right is we took the books, added line numbers and chapter numbers. That's what is called original books. So we look at original books. This is just where we were testing it out and make sure that everything was good. So we say uh, original books and unnest tokens. Done. Okay. So it's essentially again like before. Take the column called text, break it into words. Put it in a put each of the individual words into a column called word, and while you're doing that, leave the other columns like line number and chapter number, just carry them along, right? So, for example, if I had a line here, and it was on line hundred, chapter one, right? Then each of the words will be on line one hundred, chapter one, right? So the line number and the chapter number will both be carried to the word, just like we saw before. Right. So if you look at tidy books, you're going to see this. Right. Remember, the very first line was the title line sense and sensibility, which was on line one, chapter zero. Right. So here you see sense line one, chapter zero and line one, chapter zero sensibility line one, chapter zero. Right. By Jane Austen, etc., etc. Notice another cute thing, cool thing that's actually happened here. If we went back to the original text, you see that there were several lines which were completely blank. In other words, they were free of text, right? Just to uh, emphasize that, let's go back and actually take a look at the original text. Right, so let's say here. So here you see sense and sensibility. It's the text the of the title page. The next line is blank. Then you have Jane Austen. Then the next line is blank, 1811. Several blank lines, chapter one. Again, two blank lines, the beginning of the text, right? So you've got a lot of blank lines. But nicely, what has happened is that when we broke it up into words,
when we broke it up into words, all of those blank lines have completely disappeared, right? After all, if you've got a line in which the text is empty, then obviously there's, there are no words in that text and therefore the blank lines just vanish automatically, right? So we didn't have to take any extra steps to get rid of those lines which have no text. That automatically happened. And of course, since we already know that unnest tokens gets rid of punctuation, like commas and periods are gone, and also converts everything to lowercase. Okay, before we jump into further analysis of this, let's just explore a little bit and see if all is well. Okay, so let's do some explorations here. So we are seeing here, uh, uh, I'm just taking this tidy books that we have and assigning, doing some processing. So I'm going to count the occurrence of each word in this tidy books, right? In other words, we have just broken it up, broken up the text into words, right? I'm simply going to count how many times each word occurs and we are now arranging it alphabetically. Okay, we are arranging the words alphabetically. Okay, so now we should be able to see the value contained in X. Now, if you take a look at the at X, it turns out to look like this, right? You've got underscore A underscore, underscore accepted underscores, right? So under some conditions, and I don't know exactly under what conditions, unnest tokens surrounds individual words with underscores, okay? Obviously, it doesn't always do that because clearly here you're seeing no underscores in these words, right? So it's not that it always puts underscores, but under some situations, it seems to be putting underscores around the words, okay? I don't know exactly under what conditions it does that. So clearly, we want to get rid of these underscores also, right? So that otherwise, uh, effect underscore effect underscore would be considered as one word and effect all by itself would be considered a different word which would not be correct okay so that's that's what we see and of course you notice that these are all very very rare occurrences right we've counted how many times the word occurred in the entire works of Jane Austen and underscore accepted underscore has occurred once okay so these are not significant occurrences at all I don't know why these happen nevertheless just for uh, clarification and just for cleanliness, we should get rid of those underscores. Okay, so in order to clean it up, all we need to do again is uh, just use our regular expression, knowledge of regular expression once again. We are saying tidy books, uh, we are replacing it, tidy books pipe to mutate word. In other words, we are taking our existing column called word, right, and then replacing it with the regular expression match of A to Z quote plus. That is, uh, one of these, any one of these characters occurring once or one or more times, right? A to Z, of course, lowercase letters because our text only contains lowercase letters now. And then, of course, quote can appear within a text, right? For example, uh, for the possessive and so on, right? So we are using the quote as well. Right? So whenever you've got a string of characters in which one of the lowercase alphabets occurs or a quote occurs, right? extract that as a word. Right? Notice that this is one or more occurrences of only these characters. Right? So the moment a space occurs, then the match ends there. Right? So string extract is now going to extract for every word, it's going to extract only the word part of it and forget about any other junk that may exist. Okay? So once you've done that, and if you take a look at X, you'll see this, right? So the A uh, has now become clean. The under, underscore is gone, okay, and, and so on, okay? Of course, it's still uh, surprising that the word abandoned occurs only once in all of Jane Austen's books. Abate occurs only twice. So that's pretty interesting, actually. But anyway, that's uh, something else that we need to think about later on, okay? So we do this cleaning process of, uh, of the words to get rid of all of these junk things. Of course, uh, actually speaking, given the fact that these things occur so few times, uh, it wouldn't have really mattered in any serious way for us. But nevertheless, we learned a trick right here. 
Okay, let's look at a few things. Suppose we did dim tidy books. Okay, we see that this uh, data frame or table that we have created, which is the whole text broken up into individual words, has 725,054 words in all, right? Not unique words, it's just all the words in the text. And we already saw from the previous uh, example that A occurs 13,410 times in all the books. Okay, so it's not all the uh, unique words, but all the words, complete count of the words. And there are four columns, uh, because if you look at it, you, you'll see that there are uh, four columns that we've created in, in tidy books. And that will be uh, the word, the line, the chapter, and what else? Okay, book, line, chapter, word. Those are the four columns in that table. Okay, so that's 725,054, right? So now, suppose we count the words, individual words, and sort equals true, right? We see that there's a total of 14,520 words that, words that have been used, okay? So uh, only 14,520 words have been used in all of Jane Austen's books, okay? So you could probably say that that was her vocabulary, okay? But now, of course, when you want to analyze text, right, as you already saw, the word A occurs about 13,000 times. Or if you look here, right, because we have counted the words by the uh, each word, how many times it occurs, and we have said sort, right? So the occurs 26,000 times, two occurs 24,000 times, and so on, okay? Now, most of the time, many of these words like and and to and the and from and I and you, things like that, we are not particularly interested in analyzing those words, right? Those are sometimes in text analytics, they're called stop words, right? We just want to get rid of those words completely, right? And once you notice from the counts itself, once you get rid of some of the stop words, you'll see that you have got much fewer words to actually analyze, right? So there is this, uh, data vector called stop words, which is already in the package tidy text. Okay, and uh, stop words, as you will see shortly, uh, there are many different sources of stop words, right? And each source of a stop word is called as a lexicon. Okay, and there are three different lexicons which define stop words. The first lexicon is called smart, another is snowball, the third is called onyx. Just three different sources that define stop words. So, for example, the, these are all defined in the smart lexicon. That's the first one that is listed. And if you go further down, you'll see words from the other two lexicons as well. Okay. So, basically, what they've done is they've collected all the stop words defined in three different places, put them all together into one vector called, into one, uh, uh, not a vector, it's a, it's a data frame called uh, stop words. Okay, so what we are now going to do is to take our tidy books and eliminate all the stop words from them. Okay, now interestingly, the word in our tidy books, the column name is word, right? If you look at the column name in tidy books, the for a word, it's called word, and the column name in stop words, the word is also called word. Okay, so interestingly, the column name is the same here as well as in tidy books, right? So we already know, given two tables, how to do a semi-join or an anti-join to say, you know, uh, get rid of any words that occur in this frame, which is basically, it's a join. So what we're saying is, in tidy books, get rid of any words that also occur in stop words. And implicitly, the join is going to happen by the column called word, okay? So what's going to happen as a result of this is all of these stop words will get eliminated. And therefore, the number of rows left in tidy books will be quite significantly smaller, right? So now if you look at dim tidy books, right, the rows got reduced from 725,000 to about 217,000.
right? That is because all of these stop words were removed by this anti-join. 